Is it recording now? We are. Okay. So we have the um, reference image available and then the note hand that I um, available that I made as well. And they'll be guiding me as we go into that. Now for a subject like this, I have to make the reflections do a lot of the heavy uh, lifting so that we understand the, the subject. So I really will have to um, do uh, a relatively accurate drawing spatially because the, you know, that's one of the defining elements of what makes a reflection a reflection. So I'm dividing my paper into quadrants. And this is going to help me geolocate the different subject elements on the paper, right? So I have the tree trunk. I'm going to make my four tick marks. Tree trunk is, according to the dividing of the quadrants, comes in at a, um, just about the halfway mark. And um, the creek bed is just below the, the halfway mark. So somewhere in here. I'm, and I'm definitely drawing lightly and letting, uh, I'm gonna still paint this with my brush and not with the pencil, right? That's still my goal. And then I can see here to about, I'm looking here at this subject matter. So here's the tree trunk. It's about at the halfway mark, right? And it's gonna go, Uh, here's the, there's the trunk. And I'm dividing these out. I want a little open space to just not make it so monolithic. That's one of the changes that I made. And I'm definitely focusing on this idea always. One of them should be dominant and one of them should be secondary, right? So I'm also, again, this is the dominant trunk, this is some sort of secondary branch. And it comes, and then we have little something somethings over here. They're just little things that are uh, gonna catch the light, and I'm just helping us notate that, that it's catching the light there. And this is just a very rough idea of where the shadow line's gonna go. On the other side, by the way, you can see here, the most important thing is, where's the creek bed, right? Where's the edge of the creek start? And where's the trunk gonna go? Because that's gonna get reflected. So that's the stuff that I'm most, that's why I started with that. That's the most essential. Here we have this fence post, which will become important down below. And then we have stuff. This is gonna be, leaves and branches and then we come into here with little bits of light and over here I had this idea that we're going to have over at the edge two trunks right we needed another tool I felt like we needed another tool to help us communicate um, the reflections. Then down this comes, and then in here, actually lifts up a little bit. It's like there's a little crevice in the creek. Then we come to this interesting experience for the water. So the one of the more important things is that we have here, I think down in the back room is my rubber eraser. Can you get that for me? I'm going to line up the tree to be a reflection, right? And I see here is the, um, thank you, my love. Here is the post, right? And I'm totally attempting to bring down this line for the post. And then this is the edge of the reflection. So what I can tell as I started to draw this was that I really want this creek to be 
spatially more important than it is in this sketch. Meaning, I felt like there was too much focus on the tree, and I would like for it to um, focus more on these reflections. So I'm going to bring it up like this, just a little bit more. It's about an about an inch higher. I think this will make a, a significant difference. And then it actually increases up. This is better. Now we have, I think, the proper relationship for what's actually important in the image to me, right? And this goes back in here. I have to bring this line down. So we can begin to see, right, why is, why is it important to me that we sketch this one out much more than I might normally, right? Which is, <clears throat> we have to get these different pieces to communicate, to help us understand what we're looking at, right? Okay. And and this goes. And then we have this notation of uh, darker reflection. We'll bring in the photo again for everybody. And it's gonna go off the bottom. It's gonna have to be like that. Here's this post in the foreground, which is substantially bigger than the post in the background. I like how this post leads to the other post. Bring it in. And then we're on, we're on our way. Okay. So here we have um, our sketch. And the goal is to be able to communicate that these two sides are Right, in relationship to each other. Sometimes when we have these kinds of subjects, it, you can really get lost in the details and you lose sight of the ability to sort of quickly recognize that you're looking at uh, what the scene is, that we have this um, reflection in the water. So um, I wanted to thank um, some folks who have uh, given donations so far. So thank you to Pam and um, to Jackie and to Anne for your donations. It's appreciated. I'll be matching each of them. So uh, so your donation is doubled, which is exciting. Um, so thank you for uh, helping me uh, give, right? And um, we did have, uh, let's see, um, some of the purchases were made. So, uh, this morning, last night, I had a person connect with me, and she is buying the Misty Yosemite Falls uh, um, painting, and the and another one. What's the other one that gal got? <laughs> I can't remember. And um, and then another person uh, contacted me this morning. And they got the uh, Mendocino Mornings painting, which was a demo last month. So um, three paintings are out the door, and um, and we're marching along with the uh, the donations. And then I'm I'm matching the, the the price of the sold paintings as well. So we're doing really well, which is exciting, right? I don't think you really know what you're gonna get until you're there. That's just the way it goes. Uh, Anne would like to know if that is another recab mop that you were just using. No, that one's actually a Da Vinci. So 
um, when I got to become a um, uh, when I got to become a a cheap Joe's um, ambassador, I I get to use money that they give me to spend on their products, and so. This is a Da Vinci mop. It's an eight. It is gigantic. That's my cat. It's a gigantic. And this is your cat going outside. See you later, kitty. See if she goes to the door and meows at the door. So anyways, I use it uh, to wet the back of my paintings. I also use it uh, on when I'm painting like a full sheet and I want to get a, a big wash. A bigger mop is fantastic. On a painting like this, I probably won't even use it except to um, wet the back. And maybe if I have a giant wash in the foreground, I'll, I'll use it for a giant wash just because it goes so quick. Um, but it's really for bigger paintings. Um, so normally it's a little out of my price range. It's about a hundred bucks for the brush. But um, since I got to be an, an ambassador with uh, Cheap Joe's, I, I could afford it. <laughs> so that's the story on the brush. And why is it not a recap brush, right? Um, I had a recap brush that was big and I had some issues with the bigger brushes. And bigger brushes in general, I think I lose a lot of hair in the brushes. And um, the smaller ones are all fine, but the big ones, no. So I'm trying the Da Vinci now to see if I can get a successful experience. All right. Is this centered on the um, the document? A bit further up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So uh, next up is our wash. So the no tan from before <clears throat> is very helpful to understand how we're going to approach this painting, which is that everything that is currently pale, that's white, is going to be what we're going to be painting in the first wash. So. Everything that's dark is gonna go in later. Just so we get a sense from the beginning about the decisions that I was making for this subject and what does it mean for how I'm gonna approach the painting process. <clears throat> and um, the other interesting thing about this subject is that in here in the creek, we have this very peculiar process where we have the sky blue meeting the kind of warm highlights in the bottom of the creek. And these are really almost the same value. So what it means is I can't paint these at the same time if I want to retain my edges. So we're going to have to do some spatial fancy footwork to see if we can get the, the yellows in, um, to go in first, and then the blues to go in second, and then the darks to go in last. So I have my handy dandy butcher's tray to uh, facilitate my wash and I've got my recap mop which I clearly didn't fully uh, clean from the last time I used it because the tip is all hard and full of paint so here we go bada bada boom so I'm washing it and very gently massaging <clears throat> the, the tip to get the pigment out so it's not all clogged up. And I now officially have a dirty paint cup, as it should be. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to grab some of the um, Naples yellow and some cadmium yellow. And I definitely have been learning that, you know, they um, dampen off as they dry. So I really want to make sure that they're vibrant now. But I also want to make sure that they're pale, right? This area behind the tree is sunny. So that sunny nature of the background and how it helps express the, the shadows is, right, it's really, they're codependent. So we need to make sure that the background is both vibrantly yellow, but also pale. So I'm going to come in, do my test. That looks fine. I'm going to start to drop in the wash. I can go over the top of the tree. It shouldn't matter. 
um, because the tree will be a dark value and it'll just go over the top of it. People don't really give uh, watercolors enough credit for being opaque and it's pretty opaque. So um, particularly when you're doing your darks. So we don't have to fret and ruin our wash by trying to cut around lots of shapes. So I do want to get something a little red in here just to kind of uh, vary the, the quality of this background. And we're going to reach this area where we're going to get a little bit of green. So um, I recently put chromium oxide back on my palette and it's a kind of muted, very opaque green. And um, here we go. Yep. So it is June and this was up in the foothills. And so you're gonna get a lot of, uh, you know, rusty colors and muted greens and only little pops of um, really vibrant color here and there. So I got my bead, right, that's keeping things alive. Then down here by the creek, we have uh, some more color, some more vibrant green, right? Because down by the creek, we have more water. So we're helping to kind of communicate these two environments. And I'm keeping little bits of um, little pops of white, right? I don't want to overstate everything and have it entirely be super dark. Um, and I want some little pops of sunlight. All right, we're down to the creek's edge. First base, but we haven't scored yet. So, remember, everything that I'm putting in now, this will be, um, these are the lights. Everything I'm gonna put on top will be the darks and the second wash, all that foliage in the upper area that I was showing you earlier, this will all be done later. The tree will be done later. Um, and all the shadows in the creek will be done later. It's, it's a, a, a lots of later, right? So for the creek, I wanna get that kind of murky color that we get underneath the water. And we go. we're gonna let the pale value and this murky color work together. And then I don't wanna muddy the blues. So what I wanna do in a rare event is I'm gonna um, do the blues in a second wash. And I wanna grab um, a small synthetic, small herb. This is my Escoda Perla. And I'm gonna paint the trunk, the trunk, the post here, because there will be little warm highlights inside of this post. And so the post is part of the highlights, so to speak. There we go. And I'm gonna get more yellow. So assuming that this painting isn't terrible, <laughs> um, it'll be for sale too. And It'll be for 150, uh, like the other paintings of its size. And um, the proceeds will go to the fundraiser and I would be matching the, the, the donated dollar value. Um, I wanted to say thank you to some um, donations that we've gotten. So thank you uh, to Laura, who donated $100, and to Sheila, who donated 50 
And onwards we go. Yes. Well, you put the dollar value on, so I read it out loud. <laughs> I thought about that. Like, well, <laughs> she's the boss. So <laughs> I'm just the guy with the paintbrush. Um, Sorry, folks, if you want to remain anonymous. <laughs> <Sorry. I apologize. laughs> okay. But yeah, no good deed goes unpunished. So uh, thank you very much, you guys. It's really nice of you. You um, might get more if you announce how much everybody is donating. <laughs> it's competitive. Um, that was Sheila. I, yes. It's just, a, you know, I wasn't really sure if it was going to be successful or not. And um, just like I don't know if this painting is going to be terrible. But, um, but I've been really pleased and uh, humbled. And it's been a, a real pleasure to help facilitate this process. So. Thanks. That's the short of it, right? Not much more to say about that. So far, we have two hundred and thirty donate two hundred and thirty dollars in donations, and that's separate from the um, from the paintings and all of that, which is great. Um, which is great, right? Um, we had a couple of donations uh, this morning before the demo, and I was emailing a guy back. He donated ten dollars. John did, and I said. If everybody just donated ten dollars, we'd have millions of dollars, right? So um, I'm just pleased that every donation is made. I, I do not judge that. Um, over here in the sun, I'm definitely deliberately leaving more speckles, right? In the sun, we're going to get little highlights on the grass, and it's going to be uh, popping. With some vibrancy and I want to make sure that that shows and then man, this is, now here comes the tricks the tricksy part I gotta get a transition this is one of the harder parts of the whole painting we have this blue sky that's gonna have dark shadows on it and then when it hits the Sun it changes its hue and we go from of this pale blue to this pale honeyed yellow and they're similar in value and I don't want a hard edge so what I'm going to do is prep this area with water it's going to cross over the border and um, I'm prepping this for the, um, the yellow that I'm going to drop in and I'm going to come along here and I'm going to kiss the edge of the top section there we go and yep, and I'm gonna do the same over here. I just want to be able later to um, I want to decide where the edge is going to be. I don't want um, to have it decided for me by some fact of what I did in an earlier wash when I was dropping in the color. I don't want that. Um, I really like what this red is doing over here. So I'm going to drop in some more red. Here we go. All right? Never too late to ruin a painting. Right, those little rusty bits um, that you see in a field up in the foothills. And, you know, I grew up in the foothills. And it's a near and dear to my heart. So I know this space very well. Um, all righty. And here goes the next batch of warm, sunny rocks. Okay. Looking good. All right. <sighs> Gotta remember to keep breathing. <laughs> Thank you, Christina, for your $40 donation. It's much appreciated. 
and we're up to 270. <laughs> Here at the phone bank. Um, and that's the number before we match it. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. That's worth saying out loud. Thank you, my love. That's the number before we match it. So really, the truth is we're up to um, 540, which is awesome. And that's not including the paintings. So 270. Wow, we're up to $920. Um, so we're up to $1,840. God, that's great. That's super great. Um, all right, and the last bit of green. I really like this green in here, and I feel like it's important. I'm a little concerned it's going to disappear later when we uh, drop our shadows in, but it'll be hiding, right? It'll be hiding underneath things. Here. I know this isn't green in the photo, but I think I want that little compliment. to the other side of the um, tweak. And so anything else that I want to do in this little baby introductory phase? Draw this in. And this is just the highlights for that, right? Um, I think we are reaching the end of phase one. Um, let's see here, we have a little patch of grass. I'd like, I'd like to decide where the edge is later, right? So that requires like fill in my edges now and I have a soft transition. Um, so as you can see already, right, this is really starting to read. And uh, after it dries, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to dry this. And then I'm going to paint in the blue down in these two sections. And this will already begin to read. Um, and then when I paint the blue, it'll begin to dry out. And then I'll be doing, I'll be working up the top because the top will already have been dry because we'll be blow drying now. So, um, and then really once I get the stark tree in and I get the blue in here, we'll be on our way to having it read as a proper, a proper subject, right? It won't be so smooshy and illegible. Um, and I think that's it for the moment. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to check the, the amount of moisture on the surface. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm seeing if this area is still wet, and it is. Right? I'm looking for the sheen on the uh, surface. And it's, there is some there. I'm just going to drop a little bit more green in here because I want it to feel like the trunk comes down and meets this little patch. And yeah, this is good. Okay, this is good. Um, the little bell in my head is going off. I'm to blow this dry, and then come back and paint more. All right. Um, yes, my love. I guess I do. Thank you very much. Um, can we put them on speaker? Uh, they can unmute themselves. Sweet. I mean, I'm just here, and I this will be a pretty quick blow dry. So, I'm, I'm assuming. Yep. So if anybody we, has questions, please by all means. We need to turn that the other way so that the bottom is wet and the top is dry. So I want to. Pull yeah. It out otherwise, it'll bleed back. Oh, well, that would be bad. It would be bad. It'd be a bummer. Okay. Don't don't bleed back. So yeah. please unmute yourselves, ask questions, all that jazz. Yeah. Or don't. I won't judge you. Is my phone, uh, <laughs> I was sharing my fingers there. I was like, is my volume on? Yes, my volume is on as well. So I can hear people if they're talking to me. Sweet.
So Stephen, what part of the painting is she drawing and what are you not having her dry? I'm actually having her dry everything. Okay. But when she was picking it up, uh, she was holding it, you know, naturally speaking, like at an angle. But the sky was in, at the bottom of the angle that she was holding it at. She had accidentally picked it up upside down. I handed it to her that way. Uh oh, so I see. Got it. That's a great way to make the, the part that is wetter, which is the bottom of the bottom of the painting where the creek and the grass was bleed back into the sky and, and accidentally get a blossom, right? Because the sky was already starting to dry, right? It was a, just a kind of coming velvety and matte if I was looking at the light bouncing off of it. So I knew that that section was dry enough to cause problems. Good question. Well, I'm going to make a post, not on the blog, but I'll probably post it on Instagram, so it'll be on Facebook tomorrow. But, um, you know, yesterday was Juneteenth, um, and um, as I'm trying to educate myself and um, participate, I would just say it was very interesting for me because I had never heard of Juneteenth. Um, until this week. So, and I'm a liberal college educated guy. So I would have thought I would have heard of something like that. Um, but I thought it spoke to um, the issue, right? But this is something that I think there's a certain portion of the population that would be celebrating Juneteenth. And it is absolutely not part of my personal experience. So uh, I'll be sharing on Facebook and Instagram some links and things that I've been using to read about things to educate myself, since I clearly um, have a deficit to fill. Um, and I'll be sharing those things in my post um, as well. So um, it's been an interesting time through this system. How's it going, my love? All right. And then we're going to get into the nitty gritty, right? When she comes back. So, in a subject like this, perfect. Thank you, my love. In a subject like this, part of what makes it um, interesting but complicated is that um, we have two different geographic areas on the painting that are clearly meant to define two objects, right? One is uh, the reflection of the sky, and one is where we can see through the trunk, the reflection of the trunk of a tree, and then we can see through that from the dappled light into the warm honeyed tones at the bottom of the creek. Well, we so we have these two shapes, and they are the same value, basically, right? This blue is a very similar value to this creamy yellow. So if I come up closer, we can hopefully see this a little better, right? I mean, there's obviously these dark values, but we also have this sort of pale blue, and it is very similar in value to the yellow. So when we have something like that going on, if I want an edge, if the edge is important, I have to paint them at separate times, even though they're both very pale, right? That is not the way that I normally paint. But when we have these similar values meeting and they're paler values, then this is the method, in my opinion. So I'm gonna paint the blue first. I'm gonna paint the blue first because I need to paint the blue to dry so that I can do the darker values on top of the water. So I'm gonna paint it first, and then I'm gonna work at the top of the painting and do start doing my darker values up at the top. And then hopefully by the time I get down to the bottom, this blue that I dropped in will be dry enough 
that either A, it'll take a quick blow dry, or B, it will be dry enough that I can continue. What I'll do is I'll go start at the top and I'll go probably all the way down to the shoreline. And that'll be a nice place for me to pause. The shoreline has a jagged edge, so it won't stick out so much like a thumb if uh, we have a little dried section there. And then I can continue down from there and it'll allow me to sort of pause and assess. So, you know, logistics aren't really what make great art, but if you don't know how to run the logistics of the painting, if you don't have some kind of plan, it's really hard to make a successful painting, right? So you gotta have the nuts and bolts in order. Um, let's see, we have some new people who've come in. We have uh, Bill, and is that Anna? And, and on. On, and, and, and on, okay. We have a whole bunch of folks, that's fun. So thank you to Penny and, and to Pitt and to Kim also for coming in. And we're all the way up to 23 today, which is pretty good. So um, without further ado, we're gonna jump into the next phase. Um, let's grab a slightly smaller brush, right? This is the brush I was using for the, for the wash. And then I'm gonna get a slightly smaller mop um, for the trunk, things of that nature. And I'll probably be transitioning into my Inkston Chinese calligraphy brushes as well. And I'm gonna wring out this sponge, which is ridiculously wet. Um, and you know, if you're if you're watching, it's hard to remember and to say to folks like, oh, I'm daubing off my brush. But if you're paying attention to the palette, um, I daub off all the time. So it's, uh, there are times, particularly in this first wash that I just completed, when you could almost not have enough water. It can be done, but you really wanna be sloppy and wet because you don't want edges all over the place. But after that, when we're painting wet into wet, the truth is we need um, to control the amount of moisture. And, and it's easy to have too much moisture on your brush. It's easy to have too big of a brush. And um, so it's a little antithetical, but uh, as long as you got the first layer of, of moisture down when I put in this first little batch um, of a cool gray, after that, I need to be watching how much moisture is on my brush a lot and making sure I'm not putting too much on. All right, so I've got my gray. And I'm always testing, right? I don't know if you guys have seen that. I'm testing, of course, in the body of the trunk of the tree, so I can go over it, but I am, I'm testing. So this is all in shade, so I'm actually gonna cover the whole tree, right? And then I'm, this is gonna be my light value on the tree, if that makes sense, right? So I'm actually gonna drop into this, darker values. Wanted to say hi to Margaret and Marge and Neil. Thank you for joining me today and participating. And Kim, did I say hi to you earlier? I think I did, but if I didn't, thank you for coming. Um, I'm always interested in knowing uh, where folks are from. If you can put it in the comments, that, that's neat. It's just neat to connect with people uh, from around the world and around the United States. And it's an amazing thing to have a kind of uh, community that of like-minded people, right? That are interested in this and how hard it would be if, if we didn't have such an opportunity as what we have here. Okay. So I am dropping more water into this. Oh, we got a bunch of local people today. Napa, Oakland, San Jose. Neat. Napa, Oakland, that is pretty cool. Um, I'm dropping in more water to this little gray wash for this tree because I want more granulation to occur. So, and I don't know if you can tell, but we've already got the beginnings of a much richer granulation which I like. And I'm gonna keep these little speckles 
to make it look like light catching the side of the tree. Um, and bring it down to the creek, right? Like we talked about just a moment ago. We also have Kim in from Indiana. Okay. Thank you for coming, Kim. And Kip from Santa Rosa. Okay. We got some local folks. So you can see here, and some men in Indiana. We had somebody come from Iceland before. That was cool. You can see how I'm leaving this broken edge, and that's on purpose. The goal is where I want to be able to sort of continue things. Um, I, I create a broken edge, and it helps keep my options open later on. Go ahead, Muv. Do your thing. She's cleaning my water for me, which is nice. So I always have a dirty water and a clean water, right? And there the twain shall meet, supposedly, but of course they really meet all the time. But I try to keep them separated. So coming in. And I'm going to um, grab my Chinese brush. Thank you, my darling. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to start to drop in some foliage. So the foliage, of course, is not, I mean, it's a different object, but it's the same shape. So I'm always trying to sort of, in my mind, you know, recognize that those are not the same. So they're different objects, of course, we know they're different objects, but they're also different shapes, meaning, I mean, but they're the same shape, meaning that I want to. I really want to connect them. I don't need them to be separate ob shapes in the painting. So the best way to do that is to start dropping it in now because the paint will blend. And um, we want it to blend. We want those delicious soft edges, you know? If I was an oil painter, maybe I would be so annoyed I couldn't get such soft edges, right? I gotta work at it. But for us, <laughs> for us, it happens whether you want it to or not. So um, I'm going to warm it up a little bit. Diversify my greens. There we go. And just creating the idea of these greens. And then I'm going to. Uh, spritz just this little localized area. I'm just going to activate it a little bit and get it to run and um, be soft edged. I don't want all hard edges. And then I'm coming in here and I'm looking off screen at my no tan. So that's the one that's on Facebook and that's on Instagram. And that's my little guide, just as much as really the photo is, um, because that has all the it really has the, the, the decisions that I was making, right? As I went through and changed and focused on what I wanted to say in the painting and the, little, the ways in which maybe my painting is not the same as um, the photo, that's all in the Notan. So the Notan is a record of my thinking and, and that's important. So I'm putting in here these shadowy bits of uh, grass against the side of the trunk that come down. Right, helping us create some sense of depth. And it's hanging on, that little thing there. Okay, now I actually put so much of uh, water in to this trunk that I'm not gonna have to fuss with getting that wonderful kind of uh, corrugated, super knobbly oak tree um, feeling. It's really in there already for me, right? Um, so as we approach the light here, I'm dropping more yellow. This is the Naples yellow that I like. That's uh, pale but opaque. And this little area in here, going to kind of do in a slapdash way on purpose. I just want to reinforce with myself that it's not, I'm not painting this painting 
because of this little patch of grass. So, and I can always go in and uh, fuss with it later. I have some opaque pigments. I'm perfectly happy to use them, right? And uh, so I don't, I don't have to be perfect with every stroke. But I do want to kind of accept the strokes. I want to have them do something and then move on to the next stroke. Uh, I'm mixing up a kind of uh, warm gray. using the body of the brush there. And then I'm gonna keep a little section here of uh, light. So these greens will become my little bright sections and I can always add to it later. I wanna bring in a little bit of something opaque. I am kind of referencing. The, my no tan. What happened? It just went away. Uh, we lost. Did you guys lose me? We've got somebody else on the screen. Yep, I see Jackie. Oh. Uh, all right. Technical difficulties. Oh, Jackie's sharing her screen with us. No, Jackie. just, just, just delete me. <laughs> there, hold on. There we go. I think there we about... go. Oh, All right. I, oh, God, I know sorry. The talking at the bottom is really tempting for a lot of people. Um, yeah, it was me. It was. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jackie, it was nice to literally see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, sorry. <laughs> All right. And I need to paint this little section with these trunks that I added in and such. So I'm gonna grab some greens, I'm sorry, some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Get this in there. That's too much. That's why we test it. Holy shamoly. <laughs> there we go. And then I'm gonna warm it up. There we go. And so this little jagged edge down below is really important to make things not look terrible later. Um, I'm going to be able to integrate this jagged edge to their continued wash. So it's an easy thing to forget about it, right? And, and when we forget about it, um, sadness occurs. So we, uh, we need to really make sure that um, we remember that that's there and that's part of what's going on. I want this to kind of match the oak tree, meaning I want it to be cooler than it is right now. Right, there we go. Okay, and I need greens. So the greens in here are interesting. I like them because they're a little more vibrant. So I'm gonna grab more yellow, cadmium yellow. Mixing it up with that uh, chromium oxide. And uh, away we go. So up in here, I'm gonna smash my brush and really deform it. And I just wanna get, I don't wanna close the light out. Right? I need this light to kind of remain in here. I don't want to close it off all the way. I want these little uh, patches of light, this little scruffy uh, young sapling. The little green sort of leaves that are shining there. And I'm going to grab part of meat, stealing my painting. With it. <laughs> Something I was checking to see, right? How dry is my painting? Mixing up another dark green. Why? Because this oak tree has dark leaves next to it. They're its own leaves, they're in shade, right? And I want to express that shadiness. 
with a different kind of green. And it comes greeting the shape of this uh, post. And that's pretty good. I left this open in my note hand, which is a little different than it is in a photo. I'm grabbing yellow, and it's pretty yellow. Not a lot of other stuff in it. And but even that yellow isn't clean enough. Highlights. I'm splattering. I want to make this area sunny. Right, I want a different, a different color. I don't want it to all be just this green. I have to push other highlights in here to make it sing. So it has a dynamic nature about it. It comes down and it greets this little shadowy area by the creek. So this is one of those funny things. I'm spending more time on this than I thought I would, but we need to make it say its job. Got to do what we say it's supposed to be doing. And that's about that. I'm stealing this again. Okay. I'm gonna drop in. You need to see this is dark, but it's very wet. And I don't want it to be that wet for what I'm gonna do, which is I'm gonna work wet into wet on the tree trunk. So I wanna grab this, I daub it off, and then I want to drop in. Just some character. More, more character than that, though. <laughs> there we go. It's going to blossom and be messy and organic. It's going to do things that I wouldn't expect. And that's okay. That's kind of the point. I just want it to not be too flat, right? And in here, all right. And part of the reason I'm spending time on this right now is I don't really want to come back up into here very much, right? I want this to be pretty done when I'm done with it right now, and, and then I can leave it alone, and I, and I can do effects now, wet into wet, that I can't get later, right? So that gets complicated. I'd like to have these effects. And this is the only time I'm gonna get to have them. So, all right, looks like a tree to me, and Let's get a little bit of warmth in here. And we're gonna paint this little trunk, uh, post. Ah, that came out good. I like this kind of peppered look, right? I want it to grab the texture and look like nature's had a hand and what's going on there, right? For those of you who are interested, and I added a side view camera on here, so you'll see that in your gallery. My woman is snaky and super smart. So if you're interested in seeing what the brush is doing from a side angle, uh, you'll see a second uh, live video there to check out. Okay. That's a neat idea, honey. All right, so. I was annoyed that I couldn't see what your brush was doing. <laughs> I wasn't the only Maybe other people were too. So in, in this goes, there was some white paint somewhere. Hasta la bye bye brush. We need a brush, we need a, like a, a, a camera holder, right? So 
I'm grabbing a synthetic so I can make some dry brush strokes. Well, Marge is with us from Edmonton, Alberta. That's cool. Thank you for coming, Marge. All right, good. See, now with this, it's time to move to the this brush because uh, it's gonna let me have this kind of wet into wet, soft look. The brush is not very wet, right? It's a synthetic, so it also doesn't uh, carry much pigment or water, and that lets me play around wet into wet without it like exploding on my paper. But the important part of that is that I've done this other wash for the greens earlier, and, and it's allowing me this kind of freedom now. Okay. There's more to be done here, little finessey things, but they're not really, those would be the sort of things I would do after the demo, uh, where I might come in and draw little dry twigs and other sorts of things like that. But this is also a good time to like scratch if I wanna pull out little highlights. Maybe I wanna make grass over here. I want it to catch the light. This is a good time to try and recapture it. And I'll also probably come in later and I'll have little strokes of different sort of things. All right. We had a little leak there. I didn't recognize that little dot had gone down. All right. So phase two, shadows on the water. Let's see how it goes. I have here the dark shadows. I'm gonna catch this line that was there before, try to bond it. And right here. Much. I'm mixing a different color here. It's uh, a phthalo with um, Indian red. Why? I'm trying to get um, a gray that won't uh, granulate as much. But I don't know if I'm going to get that. Okay. Now it's time to be thoughtful. Because once I brush over an area, I don't get to have a second chance to um, create this feeling of reflections on the water. So I already did one here, and you now let, let's see if we can pull it back. I can always re tissue in. Yeah, Why? Because I really want it in here. So we're early in the game. Gonna have a soft edge now. It's a little better. Just wanted a little more in there. Might have been a lot of effort for not much help, but that's fine. And I am looking at my photo, and I'm looking at my no tan, right? Um, that's what I'm looking at off screen. Just trying to read how I want to work this. How I decided earlier what would be the best approach, right? A little bit of warmth in there. I'll pick up this muck, because that's really all it is. It's a warm muck from my warm well. And now we enter into, this is gonna have to come darker later. I have to reinforce the, uh, I have to reinforce the bank, but that'll happen uh, 
later. Right now, if I stop, it's the end of the universe. Because I'm not going to get a second chance to do this wash. So there definitely, you know, there are times when you can kind of do whatever you want. The first wash is a lot like that. And then there are times when it's time to pay attention. And I often paint with music. And I'll get to a part of the painting where I have to turn the music off. <laughs> so that definitely happens. Um, okay. Here we're going to break up this. Oh! Darn it. Dang, Nabbit. I was supposed to paint blue. Well, we'll figure it out later. There you go. Returning to the meeting. Okay, maybe it was just me. We're gonna keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Oh good, somebody was just saying, I can still hear and see you. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so for some reason yours died out. Yeah, mine died and yours didn't, so hallelujah. That's good news. Okie dokie. I don't know what that was all about. Right? Here we are. All right. So the other thing. So uh, you know, it's uh, Patricia wants to know if it is still too late to add some blue now. Uh, the short answer is no, but that's a very short answer. <laughs> the long answer is um, I was going to have some hard edges here, and I have to figure out how to have these hard edges, but with the blue. Um, because it's where this trunk comes along. So I don't, uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna do that. But the short answer is no, it's not. But it complicates things. But painting is a process. That's part of the part of the process. Um okay. I'm just picking up the extra water with a dry, a thirsty synthetic. Right, and I'm gonna soften these edges. I, I wet it, make it clean, and then I come in with a pretty dry brush. And I just wanna soften some of these edges. It's pretty chunky. So it's a delicate procedure, and it might be that the paint will still come down but it'll have a ruffled edge and such. I think it'll help uh, make the subject more dynamic. Um, okay, so here goes nothing. Because I agree, you need that blue. Fortunately, I'm experienced at messing up paintings. So <laughs> this sort of thing I've done before. Um, but maybe not in a demo. So anyways. <laughs> she says, no, 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 don't sweat it. You really have messed up before in a demo. <laughs> so. All right. Um, for those who have arrived uh, later in the game, please, uh, if you're interested, in um, participating in the fundraiser that's going on. We are receiving donations. And right now, uh, 
uh, including the matching funds that I, we are providing, we've hit over $1,800 already, which is really amazing. So I'm gonna give up this hard edge here that I was aiming for in an effort to um, arrive at the blue that's required for this painting to be successful. Um, that was a, seemed like a segue. It's a segue in my mind. All right. And my love, can you please take my clean water and go and make it clean for me? Yes, I can. Thank you. And I'm going to paint this other side while she's over there. So, you know. Keep on saying that painting is a process. Sounds amusing until you're in the middle of a demo and you forget to paint your sky reflections. Then it really is a process. That came out nice, and I'm leaving it. You can't convince me otherwise, right there. Right? You want those little broken edges. They're part of what's going to help us. Um, we can enter into there and make more sense of it, right? So that goes in there. This goes in here. Too much. Uh, this little nasty rag on my um, shoulder is incredibly important. It's like stage two for daubing off my brush. Um, so it allows me to really get it down to the nitty gritty of what I need on the brush. Otherwise, um, otherwise you end up with the brush that's too wet. Okay. Well, I think we've still arrived at something that looks like water with uh, a sky. So it's just uh, many roads lead to the final destination. Here I'm softening my edges. And yes, this will do, right? We're still there. It's just different, a different path, not the path I had anticipated. So I'm, part of me, I'm still in the painting again. All right, I was looking at the shine on the uh, surface. And we do have some time for me to drop in this, uh, the darker reflections, the darker shadows that are gonna be on the, where the shoreline meets the water. This will help us separate these two. These are real, it looks like one gigantic shape right now. And we're gonna do wet and wet painting to allow us to have kind of a sophisticated, uh, a sophisticated um, gradation between the two spaces. We're gonna achieve some separation through wet into wet work. And just as a reminder, if you have questions, by all means, please put them in the chat box and I will convey them to Stephen. Yes, thank you, my darling. So this was a little too wet. I need something even thicker. So I'm doing a little secondary uh, batch of dark here. And it, this is very thick paint here in the corner and I'm on my synthetic. Why? Because I need this to, to there we go. It can't be blossoming and running out into the rest of the painting. And then I don't have a dark anymore, right? So this definitely is the space where funny, weird stuff starts to happen. And I just have to sort of roll with it if I'm going to paint this wet into wet and sort of have that experience. Like here, I might end up getting a blossom. And it'll just, <clears throat> that's just the way it's going to be. Okay, a couple of questions. Sure. What colors are you using for the shoreline? This is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, yay, trusty uh, colors, but at an incredibly thick uh, ratio, right? And I'm literally grabbing, I squeeze this out, the blue, before the demo into my palette. It is uh, like fresh, and I'm grabbing, and the same for the, the burnt sienna, and I'm putting it over here in the corner because this other section of my blue well was too. Um, too wet. So 
I'm, and this is letting me paint very darkly. And second one is, how do you keep the paper so wet? Did you soak it before? That's from Susan. Yes, I did soak it at the beginning of the demo. So I didn't talk about it, but I was doing it. People were asking earlier, like, oh, what's the story on this big mop you're using and uh, the Da Vinci mop, big mop. And I was using it to wet the back. But even though Kate went and um, dried it with a blow dryer, it, it only really dries the surface. And that's okay with me, actually. I don't really mind that. Um, because it's still got moisture in the body of the paper and it's helpful because it lets everything take a long time to dry. So, um, and that's to our advantage when we want to paint wet into wet. So I can never speak enough about the value of uh, wetting the back of the paper before you start. Holy shamoli! it changed the way I painted. Did it change the way I painted, honey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it changed the way I painted. Thank you, Herman Peckle. That was something I learned from Herman, right? I think we all learn from somebody and we just try to pass it on. And 100% and, and I learned that from Herman. So I didn't in, invent it. Uh, it also shortens the amount of time it takes you to paint because you're not having to stretch and tape or staple true. or yes. any of those kinds of things. Yes. And it helps. Uh, it helps the paper dry flat, right? Because here we are. Um, it's all stretched out. There it is. We're going to call that something. That was like a frog, but we're going to call it something dynamic. It splashed out of there and came down into the rest of this. That's okay. I'm, gonna, I'm daubing off the brush. Lots of daubing off. And I'm using the side, the belly of the brush. It's very dry, it's, and, but it's still got a lot of paint in it. But if I'm doing it this way with a synthetic that I'm daubing off, I'm going to get significantly less uh, Anne paint. says, it asks, is that a gator board support, and can it really take all the water? Yes. It definitely, yes, on both accounts. I've had the board for years. It does slowly warp. I'm just entering into getting a new board. Um, but it lasts for years and it, it takes the water. It's a half inch board and, and it does a grand job. Um, doesn't have issues at all taking all this water. And it's, and it's wet even now still, right? Like I'm not using tape. It's, it's stuck on there through water tension. So I'm using the belly of the brush here be, um, because it won't deposit very much water and it will help me deposit more paint. And I want to help create a value transition between the shoreline and the beginning of the uh, reflections. So this is a, a way that allows me to do that. I could, I could I have done it earlier? Yeah, but did I mess up a little? Messing up is such a derogatory term. Taking a different path. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know, as I'm going along, I'm measuring the painting in my mind and thinking, okay, this is what I'm missing here, whatever the case might be, right? So this middle phase, it's 2.30, and we have about another half an hour before the end of the demo today. And this, this middle phase is by far the longest. I'm grabbing here um, Perlin Green, and I'm mixing it up with the Ultramarine Blue and Burnt Sienna. Why? I'm gonna do some shadow work up here and I wanted to see if I could get a little green in it, right? So I'm dropping in, I'm just uh, complicating this area. Um, this middle section is the, 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 the tough part. We're gonna need to do all of our wet into wet shadows, we're doing our darks, there's lots of complicated edges that we wanna make to make it you know, um, enticing to look at, but in, this, in the first uh, wash, it's really about cutting our edges and the rest of it is wet into wet and we don't have to fuss so much. So the first wash usually goes quick um, after we do the, our sketch and the second wash is almost always the complicated one. 
So, um, and then I'll come back in after we dry this and I'll do the jewelry if we have little details that we want to do. So. Right, but there's a lot of texture on this shoreline. It's got grasses and other things going on in it. Um, here the trunk comes all the way down to the shore. And, and, I, and a part of how we communicate that is that this place, this area is active texturally and this area is not. Pardon me. Okay, flat. When we do it flat, there's a couple of little secrets that I do use that I find are very helpful. Uh, one of them is that um, when I'm not doing a wash, I'm often painting flat. And um, that helps, right? Because the water doesn't run. And another thing is um, I wet the back. And another thing is that I, I like to use rough paper. And my experience, purely anecdotally, but I, I've never read a scientific paper on it, is that uh, rough paper stays wet longer. It just has more of these little divots that hold the water, this texture to the surface of the paper. And if you were to paint with hot press versus rough, the hot press would dry significantly faster. If I did like a little test and measured it, boy, I'd bet money on that. Um, so to me, I like painting wet into wet, and I, and I wanna make sure uh, that, I wanna make it easy for me. It's already hard enough. So I try to use all the tools I have available, and those are part of it. Um, I'm gonna, I'm waiting for this to dry. It's not there yet. And, and while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm doing the detail work up top. So I have a little plan in mind, just so you know, like a, there's a reason I'm working up top. Part of it is to let this dry down at the bottom. And then there's also work I can do down here at the bottom of the uh, painting in preparation. This is the area where we have these reflections from the branches overhanging the uh, creek. So I need to have dry edges for some of those sorts of things. So once again, I'm using a synthetic. The synthetic is dry and I'm really approaching it a lot like an oil painter might. All right, it's scrumbling and uh, I'm, I choose opaque paints. Sometimes here I have a little daub of uh, white gouache from an older painting and I'm using it to make it a little bit more opaque. Uh, Susan would like to know if this is 150 or 300 pound paper. Uh, 140 pound. So it's not super thick. Definitely if you wanted to use a uh, 300 pound, it stays wet forever. Holy shamoly. Um, why don't I use it? It was a bit like painting on a sponge. I just didn't enjoy um, the the way it took the water. Um, so there is some balance between wanting it to dry and um, needing it to stay wet, right? So for me, it, I don't use 300 pounds, but I know there are some really, there are painters who do, who I've met, and they seem to do great work, so, right? Um, okay. This area up here is, is busy enough. I wanna um, do a couple of things up in here. This is the branches that are behind the oak tree that are in the shadows. Anne wants to know why opaque? Ah, uh, down in here? Because my experience is that the um, dark colors, like the blues and the purples and things, they're opaque because blues and purples are dark. And so they don't have any problem um, competing with the other paints. But um, the paler colors do. They oftentimes have problems um, competing with the darker colors that I'm either trying to paint wet into wet with them um, or go over the top. So the pale valued colors, in my opinion, if we're painting wet into wet and I want to have some dynamic ability to change um, 
this area as like I'm currently doing. I need opaque, pushy, pale valued warm colors, right? So the yellows are paler and the oranges are paler and the limes are all paler. So those have got to be pushy to be able to compete with darks if I want to drop them in. So if you're glazing, there's a whole other set of pigments that you should be using if you really want to be able to glaze and have it feel pure and clean and you know there's a lot of other beautiful pigments that I don't really use but if you're painting wet into wet in my opinion you'll benefit from having some of the pigments be um, the, the paler valued pigments like the yellows and the oranges and the limes be opaque because then they can push back and they won't just get swallowed up by your blues and purples and dark greens so I use this Naples yellow um, it's, and I use also here uh, cad yellow and I also use cad orange and they're all a little pushy, a little heavy. And so they tend to make a little space for themselves when I'm painting wet into wet. That's a good question. All right, this looks done. The tree is nice and sort of a big block that comes down in. This is largely done. Let's come down in here. I want to kind of activate this bottom area. I'm using the belly of the brush. I just want it to look like a grass and not water. So I'm adding texture. I wet it and I'm going to get some soft edges in here. It's scrumbling, right? Very oilish. Very much something an oil painter might do. And I have here this. Uh, log my log boy what happened to my my words um post <laughs> here's this post um and here's this other post that's a dangerous thing i just did because i don't really know Blue's pretty dry, but not really super duper dry. So I'm leaving these little slivers of light because I'm gonna come back in here. There we go. I want this post to appear. So I have to put light against dark to make it appear. So in it goes to do its little job here. Now we have light on this little post, which I like. Just part of the story of the scene, right? So, you have to have enough contrast without beating you over the head with the transition. Okay. Um, yeah, we're getting somewhere. So, um next up is the reflections that go on the water here and a little bit here so a little bit just going to bring this in here and make some edge I'm using my finger as a tool to uh, soften its transition into the background. If I had painted the blue ahead of time, the way I had intended, then when I had done the reflections, these shadows colors, I would have painted this, this um, interesting little edge at that time. So once again, uh, today is the kickoff for the fundraiser. There we go, we get just some reflection in there. And um, it's gonna be going through the end of the month. So I'm not gonna be doing demos. Uh, it's like Father's Day and I have other activities the next couple of weekends, but the fundraiser will continue and the donations are gonna be continuing to be received on the website. What does that mean? It means uh, if you know other people who might like to donate, and uh, they haven't done so yet, don't worry, it's not happening just during this demonstration. I'll still be matching them, um, donations through the end of the month and receiving them, and I'm gonna make a post and report back on the awesomeness of all of you people. 
Um, and I'm still selling paintings to the end of the month, right? And since I've sold some work, like I'll be posting this painting and, and then I'll probably be attempting to sell this painting. So it'll, there'll be some additional paintings that we might like to sell. Um, and, um, and then we'll report back. But so we have the rest of today. And then please spread the word, uh, sharing the, I've done some posts on Facebook and on uh, Instagram. And if you can share posts, it's just a good way to find a larger audience of people, people that I don't know, right? But who might be interested in participating, that would be the hope, um, right? Because their, their donation is easy to do. Number one, everything's already waiting for you on the website, but also number two, their donation is gonna get done. So um, that might be something that would be of interest to people. So just wanted to say that as we're, we are slowly here approaching the end of this demo. We're, just, we're getting there. This is the post. To donate, just go to seamlessexpression.com and click the donate button. It's really very simple. You can use Stripe or PayPal. Yep. They will take your money and Stephen will match every dollar you put in. I think you can get away with something over here too. Thank you, my darling. It's hard to think and act sometimes at the same time. So, <laughs> like, I gotta make this painting not be terrible. <laughs> you want me to run a fundraiser too? So, I have, uh, sometimes my ambitions are, it's like my, uh, my eyes are bigger than my stomach, right? Sometimes it's just hard to, I wanna do it all, hard to do it all. So, All right, so we're in that phase where everything that I'm doing is just to, I want to communicate that this is water. I want to communicate uh, the scene, right? And uh, look at that, we're getting just a furry, furry little edge. Not much, but I like it. In here, it's just the tiniest bit still uh, wet. And I think that's actually going to be good because I don't want to have this separate itself too much um, visually. And yeah, we're going to get a little in here too. Just, it, it's a way to, when we have softer edges, it's a good way to connect the, the shapes when we're painting wet into wet so that not everything feels pasted on. Um, so I'm just, this is still, I can see it, uh, that it's very gently um, wet. That's good. So I'm definitely painting with the tip of the brush in this part. I want to get it, every line is interesting and uh, calligraphic as we get these shadow shapes in here. And once again, I'm looking at uh, the my note hand. And I see that I fit in these two trunks. And that means I have to include these two trunks. And the reflections. And that was part of the my magic plan. So put these in, and then we're gonna mess with them. A little bit of burnt sienna, a lot of burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna. And just, I want them, right? I don't like them to be too monolithic. I like a little variety. It'll all read like a shadow, because um, it's all gonna be darker in value. It'll all be connected on top of the blue. But what's so interesting is if you can get, you know, a warm shadow, that's a very compelling and interesting thing. Uh, warm shadows, uh, cool highlights, right? Like very Soroya uh, or um, Sargent. Very Soroya though, particularly so. 
So um, they're just often very interesting and compelling. It means that the light is bouncing up into the subject. And I actually added these trunks partly because I needed the painting to very obviously be a reflection. And when I did the no tan in any ways, I felt like um, there was still some gentle confusion about that. And I wanted it to be clearer. So I'm grabbing more ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. It's super duper thick. And I'm just, uh, the paper is very slowly, slowly drying. That's good because it means I can be more aggressive in my marks. And of course, the painting is still wet. And part of the reason it's wet is because I've been painting, right? Like I'm adding water all the time. Um, there's like a little uh, push up through the, uh, like the bank has a recess. And so this is gonna allow us to have a variety of, of values. Right, the watercolor always is drying uh, lighter than we expected, and uh, that's okay. Even when you anticipate that, you still gotta um, go back in and apply it. Right, like at one point it does one thing, and at another point it does another thing. Here, I'm sort of scrumbling the edge by using the side of a very dry brush, not dry, dry, though, right. Um, I just want to soften that edge and bring it down. Now I can do fun things like I can scrape and drop in little shapes and things and mess up these little areas so that it's not so uh, deeply dark. I want to activate the area a little bit. Um, okay. Over in here, um, what I want to do is I'm going to grab these earlier sections that were the tree reflections. Whoops, hasta la bye bye phone. So, and I'm going to bond them together, bring it down, and uh, we should get a phone holder. Really? Yeah, but this is a great idea, right? To have another another viewpoint. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> well, when I'm rich and famous and we make videos, then we'll use these techniques. <laughs> so, right? I'm wetting this area down because I want it to, um, I want to put in some lines for little rocks and things that are in the creek. And I want them to soften up. I'm just dropping some in here, just a little bit. And then I'm actually gonna daub out some. I just need it to be damp. Not much, right? I daub off my brush on the little tissue of the little uh, sponge. And this corner is probably where I'm going to have uh, my signature. So I don't have to have everything in here. I do want to indicate the feeling of uh, something below the surface. Oh, Anne wants to know if Zoom lets you pin, see both feeds at once. She tried to pin it, but it only pins one. I wish we were sophisticated enough to have an answer for you on that, Anne. We are, uh, we're learning to. Learning by doing, kind of on the job here. So uh, I will get back to you on that next time. We'll see if we can't get a better version. So I'm just dropping in. Well, number one, I'm probably off camera, but I'm just dropping in little marks to show the um, the rocks below the surface, um, right? And I see where I came. So I'm just grabbing the water from this dirty, clean water well, and what is that? 
the euphemism yeah. for a no, or it's not even a request. I mean, sure, go ahead, clean it up. Thank you, my darling. I really wanted to do this. You know, you know it's just a process. Um, because I'm going to put in some little marks in here too. I just want to activate the shadow, right? I want us to see through it and that we have this complicated and sophisticated interplay of lights and darks. And that on some level they stop um, when we reach the sunny, the sunny section of the reflection, right? So that's really the purpose. These little marks. Um, you can see back in here. It's very gentle. It's right? The water is shallow, so you can see into it. There we go. Put a little something in there. Um, and I'm we're on the home stretch. There we go. I'm just putting in some darker darks, right? And I want to uh, drop in these posts. I have other posts in the foreground and they're gonna help break things up. So this is like a, It's the American journey or that you can paint of, of alizarin crimson. Forget what they call it. Um, but really what I want is a dull red. So it's a you know a purpley dull red because it's gonna be that those things are in shadow. There we go. And I want some dirty water because I want this white to go away. And I'm going to get the little baby brush. This is my little Escoda Perla number six. It's about an eighth of an inch wide at the barrel. It's a pretty uh, narrow little brush. I don't mind the bleeding of the, uh, <laughs> I mind the bleeding, but. I don't mind the bleeding of the little paint. I, I find it interesting. It demonstrates a kind of brevity that can be appealing in a watercolor painting. It also just connects edges. And I'm gonna mix that red. I'm in the I'm in my cool palette now, but I'm not really gonna be using the cool colors anymore. So I'm uh Dropping in the blues good to make it a little bit more, uh, to make it a warm gray is really what I'm doing. And I'm cleaning off, I have a little patch of white in my palette. A little bit of a white gouache that's dried up, but I would like a little white, so. Massage. Oh, look at this. White. I thought I had a time. Tell you. There we go. Sometimes I, I know what I'm doing. Or at least I have a plan. Okay. Just gonna drop in on top. Just simple. It's really complementing other things. Then I want one edge of it be warmer. There we go. And just the gesture. Um, so when this dries, there's a little tiny things that I'll do after the demo finishes. It just requires dryness. Um, one of them is that I want to drop in these little wires that connect all these little shapes, right, for the fence. Um, but it requires that it be basically dry, dry. And I don't see, I mean, we can dry it, but it's basically three o'clock. So, um, no, you could do it. It's not like fancy schmancy. It just needs to get done. 
um, sure, I'll say it, yes. Oh. It gives people the chance to ask questions. Sure, because we are nearing the end. Uh, but if you have some questions, either about the fundraiser or if you have questions about uh, the painting uh, or my materials um, or my methods, this is a great time to ask uh, about what's going on. So. It's a very wet sponge. It's, um, it's hard for me to paint without the sponge or the towel. Um, so those are important. I almost can't paint without one of them. I need something to damp off the brush. So otherwise, it, it, won't, it won't work. Everything gets too wet. Um, for the wires that I'm going to paint, I'll uh, use one of two brushes. This is a um, is a called a reservoir liner, and it has a very sharp point made out of synthetic uh, hair, and then it has a fat belly that's made out of natural hair. The fat belly holds a lot of moisture, and this bouncy sharp point that's synthetic delivers a nice fine line. So it's a great combo. Um, this is also a simple. Little, this is the number six of Soda Perla. And, and it's fine. It also does a perfectly fine job. Sometimes you make little boo boos and it gets too fat. That can be a problem. Alternately, sometimes I try and do things with the, uh, the reservoir liner and it gets too thin and it sort of disappears. So that can be a problem too. So. Um, Did Anne ask her question about the flat calligraphy brush? I didn't, no, nothing came out loud. Okay. Uh, Anne wants to know, um, is it a flat calligraphy brush and what the brand is? Yeah, I love this brush. I'm happy that they get some kind of business. Um, these calligraphy brushes are um, from a company called Inkston, like an inkstone, one word, but without an ink. So it's Inkston. They're a Chinese, they're, it's a, I think it's a Chinese company. Actually, they're handmade. And they're pretty cheap. I think this was like 10 bucks. Um, it's natural hair. It comes to a flat tip. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, so I get a nice sharp edge. But what's nice is that if I roll it, like if I was to roll it in, the, in here and grab paint, I can also use it like a round. It won't be quite as sharp as a real sharp round, but it's sharp enough for a lot of work. Um, but also, if I want to splay it and get bristly shapes like I can use up here in the leaves, it's great for that too because um, it's got natural hair. So it acts a lot like a mop does too. So they come in sets. And if you search Inkston on my website in the little search box on the blog, I did a post and I shared about them. And I provided links to people who might like to go and buy them from that company and talk a little bit about uh, they have many, many brushes. And this is just one of them so they come in little sets so for example these two came together and there was a third one that i never used but i think they were like 25 bucks for the three of them um they're great it's, they're a great tool i use them I, when i've done uh figure painting i like to use them they carry a lot of water you can do a small wash area with them and so they're neat they're very uh diverse and they make an interesting um they make an interesting mark, which is the most important part to me also. So, wires. And what's great about these brushes is that they go forever. If I had a rigger, I definitely would have had to redo um re-wet it by now right but this i can do basically the whole section all in one go and everything is elegant and uh, delicate um i just want that like old bobbed wire from some sort of abandoned space where somebody used to maintain it right and now we have this little creek that's part of the charm to me um of the scene also uh, it's great for like uh, grasses and little natural things. So like I can grab as an example, this is the um, 
Naples yellow. And I'm looking for a little spot where I can dob some off. And then I can come in and if I want to do a little something. This is actually in the photo, so just to say. Right? I do it in one spot. I might like it in another. Uh, Bill wants to know uh, what the white oval in the middle bottom is. <laughs> That's just the blank spot, Bill. How about, how about we cover it? So, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a white stone. That's what it was. <laughs> You know, when you're in, like I said, if I was painting for myself, right, and um, and I was painting at my own, my leisure, right, and uh, what would be the sort of things that would be different? I would um, probably go slower. And um, I would do things like uh, back up from my painting and uh, look at it from 10 feet away, five feet away. And, you know, those kinds of things you hear about, well, yeah, no, they're pretty important. You just, you see things, oh, this area isn't dark enough. Oh, this is a very dominant edge and it shouldn't be, oh, whatever, right? You see things about the painting, funny little dot, right? Ooh, I forgot that up. That kind of stuff becomes much more apparent. So um, those little things sometimes get lost when you're doing a demo, in my opinion, but a good eye. Um, I'm going to back up. I'm going to take my own advice and look at it from a standing up. Not bad. Perfect. I would like, I'd like to make this little area in here slightly dark. Sometimes I do these little paintings also, and I sort of learn about the painting, and then I decide if I want to paint it again, right? Um, sometimes after I've painted it once, it becomes clear what, uh, what things I might like to do different, how I could improve it, right? All that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes, you paint it once and you think, oh, if I did ABC first, then it'll make, you know, uh, XYZ easier, right? And so you learn about the sequence of, of how uh, the painting should be done. That also can definitely happen. So, you know, it's a process. And, um, you know, we're not painting in oils. So that means, uh, the, to me, uh, that means we're not really uh, changing things very much. But really what we're doing is learning about the painting so that we can come back later and be spontaneous again. Um, but with a little plan ahead of time, right? So I definitely um, see little things and then they inform the next time I paint, right? It's the short of it. So I am very gently using this small dry brush, right? I'm using the belly of the brush. And I'm just very gently knocking in a darker value, as you can tell. It'll dry lighter because it's gonna, because it's watercolors, but it'll be darker than it was before I started. It'll add a little texture to the surface as well. Um, so, um, there you go. Little piece of California from the hillsides. Um, Speaking of which, if you haven't had a chance to tell us where you are coming in from, we would love to get a sense of locale for those of you who are joining us. Yeah. I don't want it to be that dark. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sign down here, but um, I want it to fit in with the painting. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna make a sunny yellow and put it in the rest of these spots. 
wanted to say uh, hello before we say goodbye to Patricia and to Susan and Vivian. Thank you for joining me today. There's a lot of folks that come and go through the, um, the demo. And it's hard to catch everybody. And, and hi to Laura. Um, so I think, I do think this will be okay. All right. Bye. I don't know. I like this patch of sunshine. Yeah. If I put a mark on it, it's going to darken it. I'm kind of inclined to put it over this post on the left, which is already cluttered with activity. And leave this sunny bit on the right. So. In which case, back to the darks. Uh, Pip says, your work is so inspirational and a joy to watch. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pip. And Jackie wants to know if you will be doing any Zoom workshops. <laughs> I have been asked. Um, the short answer in the short term is no. I have a lot of other things that are going on in my life. And the idea of doing more workshops is um, daunting. But um, but I appreciate the request because uh, I've had that request made. Um, it's one thing to, pardon me. It's one thing to um, do a demo. And, and I even had folks who were at the CWA demo who were painting along with me and they shared their paintings as they were doing them a little bit with me and we talked about the paintings and some of what they were doing. I think the expectation would definitely have to be very different from uh, an in-person workshop where I can be painting with you and seeing what you're doing and giving my input um, and to give my guidance as you're painting. So I feel like I would want something that was um, a little more curriculum heavy. Um, but um, I know some people are doing, um, I really wouldn't call them workshops, but it's some sort of like a guided conversational space where I can assign assignments and provide input on certain things and, and provide guidance and then also do demos. And then I know that's also going on around the world. That might be an option as well, um, but not in the short term. A couple of people have asked if you will be having open workshops later and whether or not your outdoor workshops will be going ahead. <laughs> so I have workshops, workshops scheduled and uh, I'm gonna be putting them up on the website, but I'm not really sure if they're gonna be going forward. I have a workshop in Mendocino in, at the Mendocino Art Center, part uh, plein air and part outdoors. And is that gonna go forward? Boy, I don't know. Um, maybe it would be more likely to go forward if it's only plein air. But I know that that also is restrictive for people. Um, I also have a workshop that will be coming up next March, and that is through the CWA. And um, uh, I don't know if that's going to go forward. It's March, and then it'll be indoors. Um, I do have a workshop that we have scheduled for July 11th, um, and um, it is intended to be on the East Bay. Um, but everything right now is very in flux. So I would just say, if you're interested in signing up for a workshop uh, for this July 11th outdoor workshop, it's uh, the weekend of the July 11th. It's uh, the 11th and 12th, I believe. Um, it's on the website. Yep, yeah, it is on the website. Um, and you can pay online. And it's just through me. It's not going through any other um, company. But uh, you should contact me and we should speak. Why? Because um, the, the enrollment is low, but I'm interested in maybe running it anyways. And I think um, where people are located might help us understand where we would be painting. Because we're going to need bathrooms and all the other kinds of things that you would normally have if you're painting outdoors, particularly in the day of COVID, right? So that's a long-winded way of saying, yes, I do have a workshop scheduled to come up in July. We have had a couple people sign up. So it may be occurring, and I'm, I'm a little surprised by that, but it is an outdoor workshop. Uh Laura and Jackie both say thank you. And Patricia wants to know as well, how do you pick the location for your signature? 
Yeah. It's usually on the bottom for me. Um, and uh, for me, it is a part of the painting. It's marks on the paper. So um, I want to think about the overall value composition. And usually I have a spot where I think uh, either A, I would like some sort of activity in that corner. And so I actually put it proactively in the left or the right. Or sometimes um, I don't want activity in a certain corner like this little sunny area today. And so therefore I actually proactively move it into a different area where I would like for it to be more active. So it usually has to do with composition, right? And it usually has to do with color. If it was over here, I wouldn't have done a black. I would have done green or something like the grass. But I just felt like it was going to kind of close this area. And I like this little patch of sunshine across from this other area up top. So um, I think that's it for today. This, this one is going to be for sale, um, also as part of the fundraiser. So if folks are interested, please contact me. You can contact me through the contact page on the website. That's currently how I'm facilitating sales. And they, um, they occur through PayPal, generally speaking, but PayPal also allows you to pay by card. So that's the way that it functions, just to kind of give you a heads up. And thank you to everyone who donated. We raised $270 just during this demonstration. Awesome, which, right, which will be double. Which we will be matching. So it'll be $540 today. That's a good thing that we did. Bill says awesome and so fun, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, all right, you guys, we're gonna be signing off. Unless you have questions. Unless you have questions, that's true, my apologies. Please feel free to unmute yourselves and- Yeah, I like out. hearing your voices. I'm just going to go ahead and mute you all just see what happens. <laughs> we love your work. Thank you very much. Says the sister and your niece. <laughs> Hi, <Phoebe. laughs> Hello. Hi. Oh, uh, Patricia says, can we see the recording? We are recording this today, so probably what I will do is probably next week. Is next week almost the end of the month? So maybe in the middle of the week, I will uh, share this video and the final painting and also um, what we've raised so far, and then I'll make a pub blog post. And the goal, of course, is to raise, a, raise awareness for the fundraiser. So... Um, you know, the goal is to keep it in people's minds. So I will be sharing the video is the short answer and the painting. And, and it'll be coming up sometime soon because I'd like to have it um, be an effective tool for the fundraising. So yes, it'll go on my YouTube channel. Thank you, Stephen. How did you get the texture on the tree? I missed that part. Ah, I was painting it and I decided it wasn't, um, it wasn't granulating enough. So I made the uh, wash extra wet. I actually got my mop on wet, more wet and um, dropped the water in and it tilted. And with water, it helps the um, particles separate. So you'll get much more granulation. So, so it's just the rough going into the pockets. Wow. It is. One, I'm using rough paper. And two is that it was wet enough. <laughs> Great. Yeah. And sometimes... If you actually, I've discovered this by making mistakes, you go and you do your wash, and then after you've done the wash, but while it is still wet, then you add more water. It's like you have extra pigment already on it, and then you're saturating it and moves it around. So you it's did, an interesting. You did, you did that ahead. without getting blooms. That's right. It was still wet enough. It was not late uh -huh. far after. It was maybe a minute later. Got it. But I didn't get blooms because I wet the black of the, the back of the paper. Oh, right? wow. That's important. Wow, thanks. So, yeah, that is a super duper important part of the, of the puzzle. Beautiful. Heard Thank somebody. <laughs> no, we're good. All right. <sighs> Any last questions before we sign off? Folks, comments, confusions? <laughs> Random. Probably confusions, but that's okay. Random thoughts. Thank you for putting this on. Can't wait to see another. Thank yeah, you. me too. Thank, Thank you for coming. You.
It's always good, Steve, and I'm always in, very enlightened by all your talent. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Bye. Kim also says thank you in the chat. Okay. Thank you, Kim. Do you list all the paint colors you have on your palette? Um, I have a list on the website and um, in the blog posts. I would look up, you know, palette colors or something like that. I've done blog posts on it. Um, okay, thanks. There's probably a set of six or seven or eight that are the same forever. And then I rotate other stuff in an experiment, right? But, you know, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, burnt sienna, some uh, ultramarine blue, uh, viridian, perlone green, dioxazine purple. That stuff's been on my palette for years and years. And then I bring in other stuff and explore other things. But, um, I probably could get by with six paints and I would be pretty happy. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. 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 I'll be looking at your blog. See you next time. See you next time. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much. Have a great afternoon. Happy Father's Day. <clears throat>